Today marks the first day of summer, and what better way to celebrate than a week-long interleague homestand right here at the Coliseum. 66th and Hagenberger will be a welcoming site for the Athletics as they return to the East Bay to build on their outstanding 21-13 home record. Tonight, the Green and Gold will play host to the Cincinnati Reds. These two teams have a rich World Series history, but now through the beauty of interleague play, they collide and do battle and try to survive in their tightly contested divisions. It's Game 1, A's Reds next. Monday Night Baseball from the Coliseum. It is the start of a six-game homestand, and it's all interleague baseball. Tonight, Gio Gonzalez gets the start against the Cincinnati Reds. So he's hoping that it is a good homestand after a tough road trip. And former athletic Ramon Hernandez in town. So it's game one of this three-game series. Cincinnati Reds and the Oakland A's coming up on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper, and uh, Cincinnati Reds, well, we haven't seen them since 2007, so we've been scrambling, digging in the media guide. What's this team all about? Well, what they are is a very good offensive team, and they're led by a young man by the name of Joey Votto. Well, last year, he led every, almost every offensive department for the Cincinnati Reds. He has the power. He hits for an average. He drives and runs, and even salutes us, but uh, this young man can hit. We actually saw him during spring training since the Reds are now training in Arizona along with the Cleveland Indians at their complex. So we got a chance to see a very powerful hitting ball club. And I tell you, this guy can hit. There's no doubt a very powerful hitter. And with this lineup already very powerful, this should be something of a challenge for Gio Gonzalez tonight. Indeed, it will be Gio. He struggled a little bit in his last two starts, both against National League teams. So uh, what are we going to see from Gio tonight? Well, the main thing is throw strikes. And as he wants to know, pound the strike zone, which he talks about, he was successful pitching inside. Some of the balls leaked out against the last opponent of the Chicago Cubs, so he wants to pitch inside of the right-handers, curveball and changeup, get all three pitches working, and I think pitching at home, where these guys have had a lot of success, maybe that will be the start tonight for Gio. Well, and hopefully the start of a very good homestand for the Athletics. They need it after the 2-7 and seven road trip. So we'll have lineups and first pitch when we come back to the Coliseum. It's the A's and the Cincinnati Reds. Well, they've met a couple times in the World Series. We'll talk about that and more. Stick around. We'll be back to the Coliseum in just a moment. Find out what's possible with the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Corona. Relax and refresh with Corona and Lime. Welcome back to the Coliseum. And the A's have taken the field. It's the A's and the Cincinnati Reds. That's right. We don't say that a whole lot, the A's and the Reds, but uh, it's the first of the three game series. Game time weather tonight brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission is free and the boardwalk is open daily. It's a beautiful 72 degrees and it's cooling off as the evening goes on. We've been looking forward to this kind of weather for about a week. We've been gone for a week. <laughs> But it is very nice, very comfortable. Cincinnati Reds in town, and here is their lineup for tonight's ball game. Brandon Phillips is the second baseman. Paul Yanish the shortstop. Joey Votto at first. Scott Rowland at third. Johnny Gomes in left. Drew Stubbs in center. Chris Heisey in right. Miguel Cairo the DH. Ramon Hernandez is the catcher. Defensively for the Athletics, Jackson Davis Sweeney in the outfield, Kuzminov, Pennington, Ellis Park on the infield, Suzuki is the catcher, and Gino Gonzalez on the mound. That's a starting pitcher stats brought to you by your Bay Area Hyundai dealers, and Gio Gonzalez, he's making his 15th start, he has not missed one. Six and five record, and for Gio, coming off a couple of starts, as we mentioned, a couple of losses against the Giants and the Cubs. National League Parks got a chance to swing the bat tonight. All he has to think about is pitching. First pitch. So Brandon Phillips takes the first pitch of the game for a ball. 302 with nine home runs for Phillips. Pretty good power in the leadoff spot for the Cincinnati Reds. After uh, a tough time in Seattle. One of the sleepless bats in Seattle, they call it for the weekend. This is a team that's a very powerful offense. They spent three days in Seattle, lost all three games, and scored one run and had a total of 14 hits in that series. 
So Dusty and his gang is probably glad to get out of Seattle. They lost one nothing, five to one, and one to nothing. And the first two pitchers, yes, but Ron Roland Smith yesterday. Of course, he had great incentive to try to match what uh, Cliff Lee and Felix Hernandez did, and he did against Red. On the ground to the shortstop Pennington, and that's going to be an error. A routine ground ball, and Pennington could not pick it up clean. Well, just very routine, and Phillips, and there's no doubt, he would like the rest of the Reds aggressive. Ball had it, then dropped it. So that'll bring up Paul Janish, the shortstop. Orlando Cabrera not in the lineup tonight. Yeah, he said uh, one night he's got a little ankle problem and she has to visit with him briefly in the clubhouse and he said no big deal just get the day as a matter of fact Dusty Baker had told him you tell me when you need some time and make sure you get it. Got us to right field Sweeney shading his eyes he's got. It. Check out our keys to the game brought to you by Toyota. Home sweet home. 21 and 13 3 0 versus the interleague that's a home record. Welcome back to the age. Definitely, we missed you. <laughs> at Gio at home, 290 earned run average, as are a lot of the A's pitchers. So, the friendly confines of the Coliseum, the flyover <laughs> before the third oh, lane. Gio's looking up, <laughs> saying, Whoa. So, one out, and here's Joey Vada. We talked about him in the open. Very good numbers 311. That's the sixth best batting average. In the National League, 14 homers, 43 runs batted in. Pretty impressive. Yeah. The Reds are 37 and 33. As we said, they got swept in Seattle. They have been struggling lately, lost six of their last seven. They are right in the thick of it in the National League Central, trailing the Cardinals, who we just saw, by a game and a half. Fair amount of time. The Reds are in first place, but Cardinals playing. You see a good weekend for the Cardinals, and the Reds not so much. They're 14 and 16 on the road, and three and six against the American League so far this year. So the record breakdowns for the Reds. Three and one, Duvado with Scott Rowland in the on deck circle. And that one hit toward left, hit pretty well. Jackson going back near the wall, and he leaps and he can't get it. It's off the wall. Brandon Phillips racing around third. He will score. And Joey Vado has an RBI double. Well, Votto's got good power the other way. Well, he sure does. Fastball and left his bat look like just a fly ball, slicing a little bit, but just kept carrying. And Connor Jackson got near the Dallas Braden logo, the perfect game, like he's going to have it off the tip of his glove when he went down. Of course, Phillips, tremendous speed scoring from first base. So even though it's an unearned run at this point, or that one is an unearned run. The Reds will take it, and unfortunately, the A's sadly will give it up. So Reds won, A's nothing, and here's Scott Rowland. Scott Rowland has revived his career in Cincinnati. There you go. Covers the field pretty well, does Joey Votto. Also has a huge lead off second. Scott Rowland takes a strike. It's 0 2. Check out the numbers for Scott Rowland. The facial hair for Scott Rowland. <laughs> Never seen that for the this a clean shaven gentleman. He is a gentleman. Rowland now 35 years old. And obviously, still a very productive player. Ball in the dirt. Well, a more of a National League player throughout his career, although Toronto was his home for a short amount of time. 
tremendous fielder, Bill Glover, and power. The injuries have been an issue for him the last, really, the last three years. But not this year. And so he is proving when healthy, he is still a force. One two pitch, bounce to short, and Vado, a base running mistake. He's thrown out by Pennington at third. So Roland will reach on the fielder's choice, but Vado, a mistake. Well, Vado had such a big lead, kind of got out in no man's land, even though the ball was in front of him, barely. Maybe not, because his lead was halfway to third base, it seemed, and he looked at the lead and the jump, and he started and then realized he was already so far off the bag. The question is, could Mark Gillis have gotten to the bag in enough time to get him at second? So two outs, and here's Johnny Gomes. And that pitch right there is perhaps the best pitch that she was thrown outside to a right-handed hitter. Because he nailed the outside corner. That pitch has been tough for him to throw up for a strike. Big swing by Gomes, and it's only two. So somewhere on the cleats of Johnny Gomes, there's a 707. Hard breaking ball. That's the impressive one. Gio Gonzalez to the back foot. Hard breaking ball. Goals. And the 0-2 pitch gets a fastball fouls it back. A huge season for Johnny Gomes from Petaluma. Tied for sixth in the National League in RBIs with 49. He's really never got a chance to play on a regular basis. In He's getting it here and he's paying it off and he goes around and that's a strikeout. So an unearned run for the Reds in the top of the first. We head to the bottom of the first. One nothing Cincinnati. Lead things off for the A's in the bottom of the first. Give you the rest of the A's lineup in a moment. First pitch from the youngster Mike Leak is a strike in the outside corner. And a strike on the inside corner. So a quick 0-2. He does work fast, so it does not give hitters much of a chance to do anything. So Rajay doing what he should do, and that step out, forced him to slow down his pace a little bit. Well, Jerry Crawford is the home plate umpire. Been around a long time. And See, Rajay this time is very smart. He's staying in the box so he can get ready when Leak is ready to pitch, and he does quickly. Bounce slowly toward first, and Joey Votto picks it up right near the bag, steps on the bag, and that's out number one. Here's the A's lineup Davis, Barton, Jackson, Suzuki, Sweeney, Kuzminov, Cusp, Ellis, and Pennington. Kevin Kuzminov, good career numbers against the Reds, and a big day yesterday. Defensively for the Reds, Dome Stubbs, Heisey in the outfield. Roland, Ganesh, Phillips, Votto. Phil Hernandez is the catcher, and Mike Lee, quite a story. He is the starting pitcher. Straight out of Arizona State, drafted last year, his first professional start. April 11th this year against the Cubs. 16 and 1 last year with Arizona State, so I'd say that. Got a pretty good chance to be drafted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's Just 22 years old. We're right, talking about Steven Strasburg, who was also in college, but Strasburg started the minor leagues. Leak, we saw in spring training. Look at this 46 in three seasons at Arizona State. 171 ERA last year with the 16 wins. Fastball is not only about 91, but a lot of movement. Tating, seeking action, the curveball, slider, changeup, four pitches that he throws, and of course, Ramon Hernandez, a veteran behind the plate. He's had Ramon for many years. Actually, didn't recognize him with the uh, shaved head. Yeah, he looks different. Yeah. Inside of our leak is 6'1, 190 pounds. There's Ramon. Started his career 5 and 0. But he was.
was the eighth overall pick in the draft. Signed late. Did not pitch at all in the minor leagues last year. Went to the Arizona Fall League and pitched a little bit there. Was very impressive. Barton. 4-3 on the put out. So he goes to spring training, not thinking about too much of anything, and he impresses. He impresses. And the Reds needed a starter, and they put him in there, and he's been very good. So pretty good story for Mike Leak. His last two starts, he's given up 10 earned runs in 10 and a third innings. But with a five and run record and an ERA right at three. Tough to argue with that. He was actually drafted by the A's in the seventh round back in 2006 out of high school, but he did not sign. So even a seventh round pick is pretty high out of high school. He went to Arizona State and worked out well. Connor Jackson, his first game here at the Coliseum. Bob Guerin likes Connor Jackson in that third spot. And that one just a bit low. So first base runner for the Athletics. A little bit lower than uh, one to Dirk Barton. Took the count four to three and two, but Jerry Crawford is not really that much of a low ball umpire that low anyway. So Kurt Suzuki hitting in that cleanup spot steps in, eight home runs, 30 RBIs. Kurt was three for seven in the series in St. Louis. One thing about Leak, he doesn't waste a whole lot of time. Gets it, gets his sign, and throws it. And I can see maybe in the future he does what uh, Jamie Moyer does. Raises his catcher, he gets the sign while the hitter's out of the batter's box so he can move it a little bit quicker. But by the time, especially with the runner on base, Ramon Hernandez looking into the dugout to get the calls as far as the runner on first base. So that's taking probably more time than Leak wants. He's, he's ready. He's ready. He's ready. Watch Ramon still has a look to the dugout. He goes through the sign, so all the while that's uh, everybody's ready. One one to Suzuki. Swing and a miss. Good change up and a good location on the change. Uh, change up kind of backs up a little two seam or a screwball type change up. So he goes fastball in there. Ryan Sweeney in the on deck circle if Suzuki can get aboard. Well, at some point, next couple innings, we'll read the list of players who went straight from college. Not necessarily college. How about just did not play in the minor leagues? Went straight to the big leagues. There's 21 of them. You see Leak, the latest one. But there's some interesting names that you will recognize. Quick check and the 2 2 pitch way outside. So, full count. Jackson will take off with two outs. Leak's last start was against the Dodgers, and he took the loss, giving up five earned runs in six innings. Three two to Suzuki. Swing and a miss on the outside corner. So a two out walk to Jackson, nothing else for the A's. We head to the second. The Reds with a one nothing lead.
Ace Baseball and Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Cash Creek's Splash of Cash. Hundreds of prizes every day until July 5th. Visit CashCreek.com for details. One nothing Reds over the A's. Stubbs, Heisey, Cairo. That's Drew Stubbs, Chris Heisey, Miguel Cairo. Hugh Gonzalez gave up an unearned run in the first inning. Brandon Phillips, the first hitter of the game, hit a ground ball to Pennington, and Pennington could not field it cleanly. A couple of batters later, Joey Votto with a double that scored Phillips. So 2-0 to Stubbs, the center fielder. Geo is happy tonight. His dad Max is here. And, here's a, and Geo has his father or brother, somebody from the family, pitches very well. Except for the unearned run in the first inning. Good start for him. His last start he did walk three, and a couple of them came around to score against the Cubs. Derek Lee got it for a home run. He hit that ball right down the left field line at Wrigley Field. Fastball almost hit him in his right knee. <laughs> Yet it's hit so hard it stayed fair. Curveball on 2 2, bounced foul. A very strange out of town scoreboard tonight here at the Coliseum. Left field completely blank. Right field, Kansas City, Washington complete. Yankees in Arizona in the first. Five zip. Oh, wow. Little bouncer. Stubbs is fast. Quick throw. And Kuzminov makes the play. And that's out number one. There's a few folks at uh, the closed roof in Arizona. Consider it's probably about 110. 97. Kuzminov smiling right now. Good play. Cutting in front. Cliff Bennington. And very smart to do that considering the speed of Stubbs. Day yesterday for who's putting his home run. Here's Chris Heisey. But I say they're smiling in Arizona. Diamondbacks scored five in the first against the Yankees. AJ Burnett in at 34. I think so. This is Sabathia shut out last night. Mid-season races going on. So look at all the divisions. AL East. Yankees with a one-game lead over Tampa and Boston. So there's going to be a good team from the AL East that does not make the postseason this year. Who it's going to be, we do not know. Toronto's having a good year as well. Swing and a miss by Chris Heisey. Gio Gonzalez gets his second strikeout. Two strikeouts. On the curveball, Johnny Gomes, and now Isaac. So a good hard curveball, and this is what makes a pitch so tough to hit. He throws it so hard to the right-handers, to the right foot, back foot, and if it's thrown in that direction down low. It's very difficult to make contact. Here's Cairo. He's the DH, and he takes way outside at the AL Central. Minnesota with a game and a half lead over Detroit and the White Sox five and a half back but playing well White Sox have won six in a row back to 500 yeah so that's got a pretty good chance to be a three team race there's the West Texas a three and a half game lead over the Angels eight over the Athletics and out West is tight Padres Giants Dodgers all within two games of each other Uh, three fastballs all have leaked outside and not to leak. They've done it to Cairo. The fastball, the Geo wants to finish strong inside, and Suzuki's trying to get him to do that with this pitch. It's amazing how when National League teams come into the American League parks, they use usually the DH, a player who has been a DH before, or at least played in the American League. 
Miguel Cairo has been that type of player. He shoots one to right center for a base hit. Davis gets it back in quickly. So a two out single for Miguel Cairo. A long time has nine, nine. Miguel Cairo tried to go inside, but again, Gio nine, left it up and away. Perfect pitch for Cairo nine. to hit the right center. B.I. tells us, Ray, that the Diamondbacks hit three home runs in that first inning against A.J. Burnett. Is the roof open, B.I.? It's probably <laughs> closed. I would say it's closed. This time of the year, it's closed. Could have closed the roof in St. Louis yesterday. It was hot. It would have been nice. <laughs> no roof in St. Louis. Nice ballpark, though. It was a fun weekend, even though the A's won just one game. But got to see a new park, which you know, I always enjoy doing. And we liked it. Bush Stadiums. 1 0 to Ramon Hernandez. There's a strike. Hernandez 286 with two homers and 15 RBIs. I didn't see that long ago, Ramon Hernandez. Rookie with the Athletics. He came up in 1999. Doesn't seem that long ago either that he bunted <laughs> to win. That's right. The game against the Red Sox in postseason. He's now 34 years old and he's in his 12th year in the big leagues. <laughs> there he is. A youngster. The first one of the week. Was after the 2003 season when he was traded with Terrence Long for Mark Katze in the San Diego Padres. A couple years in San Diego, three in Baltimore. This is his second year in Cincinnati. Breaking balls in the dirt. So now three and two, Cairo will take off from first. I see some hitters are able to recognize the spin and just don't even offer it anything close to the curveball that Gio throws. And certain hitters cannot do it, but Ramon has taken the curveball like he's known it's coming. Cairo goes and pitches a fastball inside and two out rally for the Reds here in the second. Two out rally, but more importantly, Not five four. pitches to Nine. Cairo and six pitches to Ramon. Tommy Kim on the white line inside batter's box. Off the plate. Well, unfortunately for Gio, you just talked about the amount of pitches. It's at 40, and that's a lot. He threw 89 in five innings in his last start, 105 pitches in five and a third innings. Start before that. That one's bounced toward Pennington. Try him again. That's right. <laughs> Flips to Ellis. No problem this time for Pennington. A couple of runners stranded for the Reds. Bottom of the second coming up, one nothing Cincinnati. 26, it's against the Pirates. Players will be wearing turn back the clock jerseys from the 70s and 15,000 fans will receive. A Joe Rudy jersey from Pepsi. Get tickets now. Visit OaklandAthletics.com or call 877-493-BALL. Boys have their Fort Knox gold unis in the lockers. Are they in there? Somebody said, did you wear those? <laughs> Proud. Big bouncer to first. Bottoms a leak and Sweeney's retired. So that's one out here in the bottom of the second inning, and that'll bring up Kevin. Kevin. Votto staying back, playing the big hop, and nice strong lead to Mike Leak. Who 
Rutgers been off. The big day yesterday. Four for four. Two singles, a double, and a home run. Fifth time in his career that he has had four or more hits in a game. Leading the athletics and RBIs with 36. This one's popped up to center field. Very high. Stubbs is there, two outs. Had a long home run yesterday in St. Louis. Over the bullpen, and that's a pretty good shot. Very good shot, as a matter of fact. Oh, the A's are a happy group to win the last game of that series and then also know that you're heading home for a while. Jack Cuss back in the DH spot. This has had a good stretch. 356 average in his last 15 games. 3 0 pitch grounds it to the second baseman, Phillips. The bat head goes <laughs> flying all the way to first. <laughs> Stuff laying all over the diamond. 1 0 red. <laughs> Hour can be our morning show. Condense it to an hour and show it at 11 p.m. The best moments, the best interviews, and Gary with Tony Bruno on Radnich Remix. Weeknights at 11 p.m. So Gina Gonzalez back to work here in the top of the third. Oh, Janish, the shortstop leading it off, followed by Joey Votto and Scott Rowland. Job on the outside corner. So 0-2. Well, as we know, getting back to American League Parks with the DH, then don't really have to worry about taking a pitcher out because of maybe being down a run or tied. Pinch hitting. Stay in as long as he's able to pitch. He's pitching, maybe he's just getting loose at pitch number 44. Good location, fastball inside, just aired it out and very good location. So one out. Here's Joey Votto. Votto on the first pitch. Grounds it to Barton who juggles it but picks it up and steps on the bag. Two outs here in the third. Number 27. And Scott Rowland Scott strolls to the plate. Rowland. Roland reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning. There's a good pitch. Called the ball by Jerry Crawford. I had it as a strike. Now you know why Dallas Brain in the perfect game. Thought it was two instead of three, instead of three and one. And that pitch is the same height. Yep. Roland shoots one foul. Scott Roland closing in on a milestone. He's got 297 career home runs. Closing in on 1,900 career hits. Seven gold gloves as well. He's a terrific player. 
Gonzalez waits for it to come down, spins, throws in time. Close play at first, but Gio Gonzalez makes the nice play and a three up, three down inning. Bottom of the third coming up, it'll be Ellis, Pennington, and Davis. One nothing. The Reds over the Athletics. Bottom of the third inning. Nice play by Gio Gonzalez to end the top of the third. Well, Gio could have let the ball roll if he didn't think he had a chance, and probably would have rolled foul. Decided to make the play, and he did because it was great. Ball topped off the plate. Scott Roller runs well. That ball near the foul line with Gio. Pull up to first base and look at that last little jump by Roland. Derek Barton, as he normally does, stretches very well. Gio, 360 and a perfect strike. Derek Barton. He's still looking for their first hit against Mike Leak. And another base run. That's the second walk. And this one, a leadoff walk, Alice. Way between innings, Mike Leak. About 90 seconds or so. Of course, as soon as the last out is made, the up our second base tonight is Chris Guccione starts the stopwatch. Well, Luke Leak came out and probably waited 30 seconds. Because he was ready to go, but the umpire is standing around. Him. And thanks to is that Guccione? That's not Guccione's second, is it? No, Guccione's at first. Or Nora's at second. I don't know. My apologies. I was looking at first base when I said Guccione. There's a Nora who has the stopwatch. They're all in blue or, you know, so. Just call them blue. I think they're wearing black jackets. You get a close-up and high definition of the men in blue, black. See what color. What do you think? It looks black. That is me. black. Yeah. So how can you say, "Come on, blue"? Oh. And it's not an American national thing anymore because they're all one. That's Chris Kuchiyama. But Pennington is on a pretty good hot streak right now. It's five for ten in that series in St. Louis, and he's got 14 hits in his last 33 at bats. So the average climbing back up now at 232. Two and zero. Oh. So Leak struggling to find the strike zone here in the third. A lot of movement on the fastball that that slot that he throws from, which uh, creates the movement, and sometimes it can move too much. That one's in first strike. Ryan Price, the pitching coach for Dusty Baker, and he's a good back home too. Yep, count. Bob Mellon was let go by the Diamondbacks. Brian Price say he go, I go. <laughs> <laughs> and he left as well. And but I would say that Brian Price is as good as he is. He can find a job. He is an excellent pitching coach. He's been with the Mariners for many years. Went to Arizona. Bob Melvin, the manager there, and now with Dusty Baker. Dusty's got to go. Pennington, a good swing, fouls it back, so the count stays at two and two. But Dusty Baker, of course, coming back to the Bay Area, managing across the Baker Spire. Alongside with him and shortstop for the Giants, but Dusty had all kinds of media in his office Did in the clubhouse. Oh, yeah, just on and on and on. Well, I want to go say hi to him, but I figured we wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> I, I waited around to do an interview with him at Radio Side and finally said hello, and he said, I got a lot of, a lot of work remaining yeah. to do. And 
get ready for tonight's game. Popular gentleman. Runner goes. Pennington pops it down the left field line. Gomes coming in, still coming in. It falls fair. Lord is lucky he reached down and caught the ball with his bare hand. Otherwise, it was going to spin over towards the bullpen. So when you're hot, good things happen in Cliff Pennington. Mark Ellis running could not be assured the ball was going to drop, so he got to second base. Watch the spin and watch the ball caught barehanded by Johnny Gomes. It's got Roland going out, no chance for him, and Gomes a long way to come. The ball outside the back door breaking ball, and Roland coming up out of the position to try to throw in the event the ball was missed, so if Pennington stays hot. So two on and nobody out for the top of the order. Rajay Davis, who grounded to first in the first. He hits it hard to roll it. He's got it to Phillips for one. Back to first, not in time. Scott Rowland was playing in, and it was not an easy play. Well, they hit it hard, but unfortunately for the A's, right to the gold glover at third. And came up. Phillips receiving the throw from Rowland. It's kind of tough to go 5 4 3 and double up Roger Davis. Yeah. So Derek Barton with a chance to knock it a run. Barton takes outside. Grounded out to second in the first inning. And Rajay Davis over at first with 26 stolen bases. One behind the major league leader, Juan Pierre. Up 2 0. Rajay did not have much of an opportunity to run on the road. There's yet doubles, a lot of doubles, but. Chris Carpenter held him very close to first base and was thrown out on a hit and run. Pitch out. Bluffed going and then falls lined right to the first baseman, Votto. Two outs. Davis actually took a couple steps towards second and the A's are lucky he did not go. Now, Votto really coming way off the bag. You don't see a first baseman come off the bag that far. He went out to the cutout and Ball was right to him. Normally, it'd take about two to three steps. That ball might have been hooking down on the corner and scoring two runs. Instead, the A's going to have to get a two out hit to score. So, Connor Jackson, second time against Lee. The first pitch is a breaking ball outside. Jackson, six for 18 with the Athletics. This is the seventh game that he has played for the A's. One and one now, Jackson. Join the A's in Chicago. Traded to Diamondbacks. Devil, really pitcher. I think he is in the big leagues. Well, there might be some interest from for Jake Fox is the Diamondbacks. No, I don't think it was the Diamondbacks. I, I was thinking the Cubs, but the Cubs let him trade it. I know it was. Uh, I saw that somebody was interested. But I can't remember who it was. The oh, Orioles. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's the there. Papa Delaire. Oh, yeah, he's the top four. Mm -hmm. Delaire Lures, our producer. His wife, Shannon, a baby boy, about a week ago. I thought Delaire had a little extra bounce in his step today. Well, of course, his eyes were a little red and tired, but. I don't think Delaire, in that shot that we have had of him, 
I don't, don't know if he could be a doctor, though. No, he's not doctor material. <laughs> he's a very good TV producer. He is not doctor material. I'm not going. Dr. Dallaire, do you have somebody that I could go see that you could recommend? Yeah. Because <laughs> I am not going to see you. <laughs> Two and two to Connor Jackson. And he got him swinging. He went inside on the hands, and Mike Leak works his way out of the first and third one out jam, and the A's do not score. 1972 World Series. It was the A's and the Reds, and this is the final out. Game seven. Heck, the World Series. It's the first, of course, in a row by the Athletics. Great, we're not. In that World Series, you were in 73 and 74, but Hayes had a three games to one lead in that 72 World Series, but the Reds won game five and game six to force a game seven in Cincinnati, and the A's won that game three to two. Big red machine, and part of that big red machine we saw tonight in Joe Morgan, who yeah. is now doing the Sunday night network game but he's also involved in Cincinnati with the Reds. Joe did not have a good series. He was three for 24 in that 72 World Series. Of course Gene Tennis was the story for the A's in that series. He hit four home runs and had nine RBIs in the seven game. Home runs in the first two at bats in yep. Cincinnati. First player in history to homer in each of his first two World Series at bats. Three and one to Johnny Gomes, and he takes a strike. Now that was the World Series where Reggie Jackson did not play. He was injured. His hamstring in Detroit in the final game. His double steal, first and third, but he was running home and slid into home and hamstring. That's why he had to play in 73 and be the MVP. <laughs> Good pitch. Breaking ball, and Johnny Gomes strikes out for the second time. And here's the two home runs by Gene Tennis. His first two at bats. Uh, just top hand and choking up on the left field line. And he put the napkin over the same pitch, same swing, and down the left field line. He did that here quite often in Coliseum, and that's why. They all got a lot of dinners at Francesco because they gave dinner for two for every home run hit. And he's played at the Coliseum. <laughs> Gino could take everybody over all the time. It seemed he just hit home runs all the time at the Coliseum. So we enjoyed fine dining at uh, Francesco's and we still do it all these years later. Well, six of the seven games in that 72 World Series were decided by one run. And they weren't blowouts either, or they weren't high scoring games either. They were all tight. That game four, I just I have it in front of me. Interesting. He's won game four here in Oakland, three to two. He scored two runs in the ninth. A lot of pinch hitters. Yeah, games. that's exactly right. Two and two now to Drew Stubbs. Catfish Hunter won two games in that series. Well, he fingers a couple of saves and a win. And a strikeout for Gio Gonzalez, so he has started to lock in. He's got five strikeouts now. One of the great catches in the World Series, all World Series, Joe Rudy gets the left field wall, just kind of pinned himself against the wall of river front and made the catch. A great play by Joe, and Joe has that photograph with his back to the infield and face planted against the wall. And that made the catch. And that was game two, and he also homered in that game. Ace two, Reds one. Make a play like that, hit a home run, and you win two to one. Huh. Joe's a great left fielder, strong arm, great hitter. We'll see him Saturday when he throws out the first pitch. 
Here Gonzalez grabs it, throws out Chris Heisey, and that is seven in a row retired by Gonzalez. one nothing Reds going to the bottom of the floor. The Hall of Famer, Joe Morgan, of course, Bay Area resident, grew up in the Bay Area, terrific player. So let's hear and uh, be in Oakland at the Coliseum for the three games while the Reds are here. And for Walt Jockety standing behind him. There's a reason why Joe's here. He's now a Reds employee, That's right? right. And Nick Cronin, of course. Talking to Walt Jockety. Scott Rowland plays it off to the side to get a good hop and throws out Kurt Suzuki. And that is out number one. Time now for our Subway Eat Fresh Ask Glenn and Ray question. You can log on to CSNCalifornia.com to post your question. Alan from Oakland asks, hey, Ray, in the 72 World Series, Gene Tennis faked an intentional walk and then Riley Finger struck out Johnny Bench looking. Did you ever attempt this when catching? Never had Riley Fingers or a pitcher like Riley who could do it. That was something, huh? But Johnny Bench still dislikes Raleigh for doing it. I don't know that he will ever forgive him <laughs> because in a sense, you, you know, you're just standing up there figuring, oh, okay, you see the catcher standing up and putting his hand out. And Johnny, of course, could not see tennis get back behind the plate and Raleigh dropped a perfect strike for the slider outside part of the plate. He threw the slider because he figured if he threw him a fastball, he might hit it, but if it's a slider to walk him, so be it. But Dick Williams with his theatrics, I mean, Start pointing and pointing and <laughs> what's this guy doing? Oh man, it worked. It worked perfect. And we're talking about it many, many years later. Can you? Let's take a look at it. It's something if you've never seen it. Well, watch Gene Tennis behind the plate. He's standing up and then he gets quickly behind the plate and Bench is just there thinking ball four. <laughs> Sweeney down the left field line and that's fair. Bounces into the corner. Johnny Gomes will get it back in. Brian Sweeney has a one out double. Well, that's Ryan Sweeney at his best going opposite field. Fastball location inside, but it leaked outside by Mike. And oh, just did not stay inside. You almost have to throw it at the hitter. Ramon wanted to make sure it was a strike, so he set up more to the inside corner, and it ended up in the middle of the plate. 16th double of the year for Sweeney. That's second most on the team behind Derek Barton. 37 of his 67 hits have gone to left field. Sweeney. Here's Kuzminov. And he swings and misses at a changeup. A lot of action on all of Leak's pitches. Doesn't throw hard, but he's got a lot of movement. And most of it's downward. Well, it helps he has a veteran Ramon Hernandez catching him and I would be surprised if there's any shaking to another pitch by Leak. Let's let Ramon call the game and just throw whatever he calls. Roland handles the hot smash. Flips it across. Sweeney stays at second. Two outs. He's are hitting the ball hard but right at infield. Well that's the wrong guy to hit it as well. Scott Rowland. Very smooth at the So Cust will step in. Jack swung at a 3-0 pitch in the second inning and grounded out. And he's going to ground to second again. Phillips down to one knee. Flips to first side, retired. So Sweeney doubles and he's stranded at second. We head to the fifth inning at the Coliseum. one nothing Reds. Still one nothing. The Reds. They scored in the top of the first inning. Gio Gonzalez has retired seven in a row. 
faces Cairo, Hernandez, and Phillips. Miguel Cairo has one of the two hits off of Gonzalez through the first four innings. He singled in the second. Gonzalez with one walk and five strikeouts. And Pitch count was a major concern early in this game. He was into the 40s in the second inning, but this is pitch number 66. Oh, Phillips swung at the first pitch in the second inning. From that point on, he has not thrown a lot of pitches. And as a result, Kurt Young, pitching coach, is a little bit happier, is happier that pitch count is manageable. Getting ready for the community fun golf tournament on Thursday. He's a good golfer. Good golfer. I just want to he may go home to Arizona. Maybe. It, uh, it's an off day. Wednesday day game and then Friday back. So times will go to Arizona unless his wife Kathy and kids are here. But he definitely is a good golfer. Out of my league. <laughs> you know, way out of my league. <laughs> Three and two to Miguel Cairo, and he got him swinging. Fastball up and away, and that is strikeout number six. Well, time now for a trivia question, which is, as always, brought to you by AT&T. Who are the five catchers in Oakland history to start 130 or more games in a season? I think you're on that list, Ray. Yes. We know that. Ramon, of course. Ramon, Jason Kendall. Yeah. There's three. Zook. There's four. There's Tiny. Well, you'd think he'd be on there. I think so, yeah. Two and zero to Ramon Hernandez, who walked in the second inning. Duncan might in seventy-two. Was the primary catcher, and at least towards the end of the season. Two -oh pitches rolled foul. Well, at least Delaire didn't tell us not to answer it. Yeah, we were reprimanded. Well, David Coppin said, "Oh, you can't answer this." Yeah, David Coppin is. He thought we were going to know the answers. Our boss. He was filling in for Delaire. Well, that's a shot to center field, and that's a base hit. But we were just having some fun. I mean, the question we're as curious about the answers as our viewers are. Now, Benny, They're one, probably guessing like we know, but I would hope that they are. Not everybody's David Feldman knows all these answers. Exactly. We're mere mortals in the world of A's history. I have trouble. Three days ago, let alone three years ago. Yeah, he doesn't know. He doesn't know these answers. No way. It's all right. Yeah, I got a haircut. The eyes are guy. Yeah, I got a haircut. We go on a road trip. The eye gets a haircut. It's looking good. All of them. We need something, and our stat man bi gets it for us. Outside to Brandon Phillips, 2 0. Oh. There he is. Oh, B.I. Wow. When we talk about our great stat man, B.I., well, folks, that's that's B.I. He's a good man. He looks terribly uncomfortable when we put him on camera, <laughs> but outside of that. <laughs> He makes us chuckle every once in a while too, and that's important in the long baseball season. Phillips, big swing, and he fouls it at the plate. Which me, I realizes that if the A score more runs, we wouldn't have time to talk about it. Well, that's true. <laughs> 
So be I say, come on, A's. Score so when the A's are scoring a bunch of runs, secondary. We don't even think about yeah. the I. Theo taking his time as he faces the dangerous Phillips. Gio's trailing one to nothing on a run in the first inning, and Gio's in five losses this year. Run support? I think it's a challenge uh, contest between Dallas Braden and Gio Gonzalez. Phillips goes around, and that is another strikeout. Seven for Gonzalez. Phillips could not hold up on the sharp breaking ball. Well, we talked about certain hitters. Ramon Hernandez takes this pitch, but kind of a half was trying to check the swing, but Phillips way out in front, ball bouncing. Good job blocking the ball by Ramon or uh, Kurt Suzuki. But Gio have scored him one or less in the five losses. So just no run support at all. Six wins, of course, enough to, to get the, the victory, but frustrating to pitch well and look up on the board and see a goose egg on your your side, the team side. But tonight it's a credit to Mike Lee, the way he's pitching. A lot of ground ball outs. One and one to Yanish. He drives with the center. Rajay Davis there, and he's got it side. Retired. A hit and a runner left for the Reds. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Ellis Pennington and Davis. One nothing Reds. He's trying to solve that young man, Mike Leak, the 22 year old right hander. First pitch is just off the plate to Ellis. Mark Walk leading off the third inning. Got as far as third with one out, but he's could not get him home and he lines it to roll and one out. Another hard hit ball into the glove of a Cincinnati Red. Here's a trivia answer brought to you by AT&T. Who are the five catchers in Oakland history to start 130 or more games in a season? Our good friend Ray Fossey, 137 in 1973 against Steinbeck. Ramon Hernandez, Kendall, and Suzuki. Kendall did it twice. Not surprised. So you remember that? I sure do. 73 just kept running you out there, huh? Of course, kept winning. So you never get tired when you're winning. No. Yeah. But you started a bunch in a row, did you not? Wasn't it a consecutive I number? I want to say 50 yeah. to start the season. I, I did not know that until I put it in Jason Kendall's bio when he got here. And actually, Ramon, of course, Ramon did a great job. And I don't remember which way it was in the early 2000s. He was not towards the end. I said, Ramon. Because at the time I had the record for most uh -huh. games caught. I said, well, Lauren, you, you get the rest of the game, so you got a chance to, to be at the top. He said, Oh, really? He caught the rest of it. <laughs> but the A's needed him yeah. because to help him go to the postseason and no days off when you get down in September in the stress draft. Well, if you caught about 50 in a row, something like that, there had to be a handful of double headers in there, too. Well, I would always caught down. Who did? <laughs> <laughs> One out walk to Cliff Pennington. See him that often these How days. Many? Even though are double headers, usually they're day night double headers, so they actually catch a good catch both ends, but it's rare. Those guys played in the 70s, they played in some double headers, I'm sure. Dusty Baker, the on-deck circle. Hank Aaron hit number 715 in Atlanta. Good friend, teammate of Hammer and Hank Aaron. Davis takes outside. Well, Dusty, of course, managed the Giants, but he played a year with the Giants, and he played his last two years with the Oakland A's. Right. How about that? Hey, Raymond. Welcome, Raymond. What a surprise. Raymond wasn't there like two seconds ago. No, he was not. He had... Chris Byer, Dusty Bacon, all of a sudden, Raymond shows up. <laughs> it's magic. Unbelievable. I'd say whoever that camera got a crop a little bit better. Huh? Marty, what do you think? That's there better. You go. That's better. That's much better. <laughs> We'd rather see Chris Byer than Raymond. <laughs> 
A dusty 1985 for the Athletics had a decent year. 268 with 14 home runs. He did that in 111 games. And then finished his career in 86 with the A's. Chopter Phillips is going to flip to second and they're going to call the runner out on the exchange. Although Yanish, he didn't have it a lot, but he, they were going to get Pennington <laughs> yeah. either way. Yes. Pennington veered off. Pennington was headed back to the dugout. I think when you're on the grass almost near the pitcher's mound, that's automatic out. They may have had a shot at Rajay Davis. Oh. He was able to get the throw on. Rajay just inside out, trying to hit the right side, hit the ball to right field, and Pennington was so far from second base. A lot of guys don't like to slide when you're 30 feet from the back. But in a case of kind of coming across the back and throwing straight through you, you better get down anyway or veer off like he did. Raji's got to steal second at least attempt. Well, he had the ball in his glove. He never had he never it. Never did. No, nope, he really did. Davis not going, and the pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. Yeah, that's really yeah, it's, it's true that he did not have control no, of the ball. It never even went into his glove. But he would have been able to pick it up and step on second. I don't know. Immediately made the call of out with the transfer. One and one to Barton, who is 0 for 2, a ground out and a line out. He came up first and third, one out, and he had a shot right at the first base. Rajay was on the move. He had a terrific jump, and he knows it. Barton fouled it back. Well, with a strike, one strike, and of course, Derek Barton had a pretty good pitch to hit, even though Rajay got the jump. Green light. Derek Barton really could not tell. Also hit the ball in the gap and scored Rajay, but fouled it back. Davis not running. Yeah, that went just inside, two and two. Leaks pitch count is 77. Davis takes off and the pitch is lined right field the base hit. Heisey's over to cut it off and they're going to hold Rajay as he was coming full steam and now they're going to have him picked off third and he's back safely. Wow. I think Rajay wanted to run. He wanted to run through the stop sign so fast, so much. And the ball though, as you mentioned, in the gap with him running, he can score. And it's almost like a single scoring a run from second. Rajay not quite at second by the time Martin hit the ball. But on the move over the head of the second baseman Phillips and so coming back in the second base kind of casually. And how did Rajay get back to third? That's the amazing thing. He's got to be thinking right there. I'm going to score. He rounded third enough thinking about it and how he got back. Went around the tap. That's a big play because they really, they really had him at third, but he maneuvered his hand in there, and there was a little double clutch from Yanish to shortstop on that throw to third, and that helped Davis as well, gave him just a little extra time. Connor Jackson takes a strike, and it's only two. Watch how he gets that hand in there. Goes with the right, then. Yeah. The left, Roller went after the right hand and got the left one around him. That was a very good call by Phil Cuzzy. Jackson lines it to left, and that's a base hit. An 0-2 pitch. 
Barton trying for third, and he's going to be safe. Jackson to second, and now they got him. Oh. Barton overslid the bag, and they got him. The run comes in to score on the hit by Connor Jackson, and we're tied at one. Subscribe to MLB.TV today to see every A's game live or on demand on your computer when you're out of town. Visit OaklandAthletics.com to order and get more details. MLB.TV baseball everywhere. New ball game tied at one is it's now the sixth inning. Eric Bart, a big hit in that inning, but he got tagged out at third, sliding the bag. Joey Votto, bobbled by Pennington, but he throws in town. There's the play that ended the inning. It got the A's the run. Yeah, got two strike hitting over Scott Rowland, and really good play. Hurry up, Rajay, get the right. score because Derek Barton. Hustling the third, and that was a very good play. He slid late, though, and overslid the bag, and that was the tough one. He got his finger stepped on by Scott Rollinger. I think he put his knee on his top of his hand. Yeah, he's thinking about Rajay Davis, and that was the big play because he was safe and came in to score. Sweeney's got it. Roland is 0 for 3 in the game as he flies out to right. Two outs. But when a guy's sliding back head first, a fielder just put his knees down, just put his body in front of the bag, and whether a guy comes back in like Rajay did, if you try to tag him, as Roland did, and Rajay got around the tag. And that was a big play because that's a third out, which it probably should have been, and they just don't score. Johnny Gomes, who has struck out twice in the game. Big swing by Gomes, and he missed the pitch in the dirt 0 2. Dallas has retired 12 of the last 13. Yeah, Suzuki went inside with a target, and after Gio stepped off, he quickly got up so he would not show the location. And the aggressiveness of the Cincinnati Reds match really helped Gio, especially after. 41 pitch the first two innings and still right now he's just at 87. Gomes very aggressive checks his swing on that. Eighty eight pitches for Gio Gonzalez. Does not get cheated, and that would, even that would be an understatement. He lets her go every swing. Well, what she, and he's always done this, but when he grabs his helmet with his right hand and pulls it down over his, his <laughs> face. Uh, the umpire got hit. Jerry Crawford, Walt Horn trots out to check on the ump. That's when you're saying, I've been doing this too long. Yeah. Especially for home parties. Can I go back to my hotel room? <laughs> Crawford's been around a long time. That focus is coming down to talk. Well, Walt Horn, what do you think he should be doing? You know what you should do when that happens. It's no fun. You can't catch your breath. You ever had that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Not like that. 
See what Gucciano is doing? He's jumping up and down. <laughs> what you're supposed to do. Hang in there, Jerry. Yeah. Feel better in about 15 minutes. <laughs> about, maybe by tomorrow. <laughs> Lays off that curveball, so two and two is the count. Goals. Big rip on that fastball, fouls it. Upstairs. Uh, three pitches, first two batters, and 0 and 2 to Johnny Gomes. Looked like it could be a very quick inning for Gio. Get back to the dugout, try to break the tie. Gomes. A couple of pitches out of the strike zone. Now three fouls after two strikes. Uh, he got him. Yeah. Good breaking ball down, and Gio Gonzalez gets his eighth strikeout. 1 1 game as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Sixth inning, it's time for the Coors Light Freeze Can. Coors Light Freeze Can is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Kurt Suzuki leads it off, and he swings at the first pitch. A little flare, shallow right field, and Phillips caught it. Right as he caught it, he had a high step over the right fielder, Chris Heisey. Very nice play by Phillips. One pitch, one out. Now that is right fielder. Ryan. Yeah, the speed. And of course, sometimes that's a deterrent with the infielder going out. But Phillips, right there, and to avoid a collision with the right fielder going down to the ground to avoid the collision. Ryan Sweeney with the double tonight. He is also grounded out. It's this one the left field. Gomes goes back. Now comes in and he's got it. Two outs. Brandon Phillips has a gold glove. His trophy case. That was in 2008. Phillips be interesting. It's turned out to be a very good player, but it's a line drive and a base hit for Guzman. But Phillips was acquired by the Cleveland Indians. This was quite a while ago with Lee Stevens, Cliff Lee, and Grady Sizemore for Bartolo Colon. Well, that's a pretty good trade. Now the Indians did not hold on to Phillips. You think about Lee, Sizemore, and Phillips. The only guy the Indians still have, of course, is Grady Sizemore. At the time, you're thinking, wow, Bartolo Colon goes to the Expos. That's a big deal. Sometimes you don't know how good trades are for a couple years after. By some of the players, the Indians were good and going to the postseason almost every year. Players they traded away. Some great, great players. I think of Brian Giles going to the Pirates. Yeah. Richie Sexton got traded. Traded Milwaukee. Still had some great clubs, but boy, they they had some great players coming up through the system. Manny Ramirez and Albert Bell. I still think Albert should have stayed in Cleveland. Yep. Of White Sox. Well, Brandon Phillips, he played some with the Indians back and forth between AAA and the big leagues. But when he came to Cincinnati in 06, they stuck him out there and he played every day. And he's had four very good years for the Reds. And this is his fifth year. They gave him a long contract. He's signed through 2011 with an option for 2012. So he's a Part of their present and future. The 
good company. Yeah. 30 home runs in 2007. Outside, it cuts so full count. Just is grounded out twice to the second baseman Phillips. Yeah, the Reds are going to hold this one off at first so he doesn't get a great jump on the three and two. No matter. He was trying to build the two outs. That's walk number four by Leak. He has struck out two and he's thrown 91 pitches. Now running, second baseman, number 14, Mark Ellis. Mark Ellis with a walk and a line out to third. It was yesterday. Mark was not in the starting lineup, but he got the sacrifice fly in the eighth inning. He gave the A's the 3 2 lead, and that was the final score. And Connor Jackson after the game when he went to third base on the base hit. Great hustle, and he ended up scoring us. The run on the sack fly. Kuzminoff's so hit to right field, and Connor Jackson said he's got a great arm right field. They had to test it. With game on the line, tie score. It turned out great. Outside corner again. Lee gets the strike. One and two. Kuzminoff at second, Cust at first. Outside and it's a 2 2 count. He throws the slide of the right handers. They started so far outside, it's hard to get the hitters to swing because it's starting out of his hand in the ball zone, so it's not even close. At least that one was. Bounce toward short. Anish straightens up, throws in time, and the A's do not score. They get a hit, a walk, and strand two. Seventh inning coming up at the Coliseum. 1 1 game. Ryan Hamgers, it was June 17th of 2007. That is Kurt Suzuki hitting his first Major League home run, and it was against the Reds. Todd Coffey right here at the Coliseum. If you've got a giant appetite, it's got to be Nations. There was Ty Van Berkley, though. Yeah. The bench there, the A's hitting coach. And these two teams have played three times in interleague play. 2002, 2004. In 2007, what's the record? Eight and one. The A's are eight and one against the Reds. In 2002, it was in Cincinnati, and that was the last year of Riverfront Stadium. And then 04 in Oakland, 07 in Oakland, and here again in 2010, the interleague series is in Oakland. Bounce up the middle. Ellis flips it to first. Stubbs is out. One out here in the seventh inning. Well, Mark Ellis makes those plays look so easy, but that time with ball headed up the middle, kind of circle around to get a good angle. I've seen a lot of times guys on the left side of the infield do that, throw across their body, but Mark Ellis just circle around. Did not have to throw as much across his body. Was still on the move. A very strong throw, but it's great position instead of going directly at the ball. He had enough time to circle around and get a good position to throw. He's a good one. But he doesn't have a gold glove on his trophy. Well, maybe he's going to have to go the whole season without making an error. <laughs> he's getting there. So Polanco worked for him. That's right. Dick Massett, big right hander, loosening up. Two pitches in there, a strike to Chris Heisey, who is struck out and bounced back to Gonzalez. Reds everyday right fielder Jay Bruce, big strong left handed hitter, is getting the night off. So Bruce is out, Orlando Cabrera out tonight. The Reds are second in the National League in runs scored, they're first in home runs. First in batting average, first in slugging. 
first in average with runners in scoring position. So that's the numbers are that they are a very good offensive team. Right now they're in an offensive slump, and that's just fine with the A's. One run over the weekend and unearned run tonight. Yeah. Absolutely, keep it going. When you stretch it out a little bit, they have scored just two runs in their last 36 innings. 3 2 pitch, a fastball, swing and a miss. Number nine for Gonzalez. That's very impressive, too. You get three and two, and the hitter's going to be sitting fastball. And location, fastball in, Jill really finished off the pitch. And great fastball just blew it by. 92 miles per hour. And Bad for pitch number 100 to be consistently at 92. Here's Cairo. It's interesting talking to some of the Reds announcers, Ray. And Reds play in a very much of a hitter's park. It's a small park in Cincinnati. The ball flies. And they take advantage of that. Lots of home runs. Bounce up the middle. And that's going to get through and a base hit. So Cairo is two for three. And that'll bring up Ramon Hernandez. But what I was saying, Ray, is the guys that I was talking to said that as a team, they probably hit 10 balls in Seattle that would have been out in Cincinnati. So, you know, it's like, well, what can you do? I mean, is is your park in Cincinnati more fair or less fair than the ballpark in Seattle? Yeah, that probably needs to be someplace in between. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Following a team, I wouldn't want a team to play in a bandbox. Uh, but yeah, but but you're right. Going to Seattle, where it's definitely a pitcher's park, and the fences are very deep. And again, coming to the Coliseum and having the excess foul territory, so definite changes that they're facing after leaving their home park. One and oh to Ramon Hernandez. Outside, two and zero. Well, Gio is just. This is where he really fights because he wants the third out, get back to the dugout, seven innings, and Ziegler and Breslow heating up. Really, he's throwing as well now as he hit earlier. That one's driven right center. Davis back, and he's going to get there, and he's got it. Side retired. A hit and a runner left. Seventh inning stretch from the Coliseum. One one. A's and Reds. One one game here at the Coliseum in the bottom of the seventh inning. Gio Gonzalez talking to the manager Bob Garrett. Looks like he's going to stay in the game. Wheel. Nick Massett takes over when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change in tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. High ERA for Massett, 6.83, and he's given up. 41 hits and 16 walks in 29 innings. Good fastball. He'll top out mid 90s to go along with a curveball slider changeup, but he has had a few control problems and see how the A's and the patience is. They did a good job. Remember the Reds traded Ken Griffey Jr. to the White Sox. That was in 2008. Pictures that the Reds got in that trade was Nick Masson. They got Masson and an infielder. So Mike Leak is done. Six innings, five hits. So he will get a no decision. And his record will stay at five and one. He looks so old, didn't he? I was just thinking. Gosh. Unbelievable. <laughs> All at 22. In the show. 
the 22. Huh. The way he pitched tonight, it's five hits and the one run. One earned run. That was a two out single by Connor Jackson in the fifth. Two and two now to Pennington. Massett is a big guy, six foot four, 235 pounds. Joey Votto picks it up, runs to the bag. Pennington's retired, one out. But Bloomberg Sports, the leader in data analysis, has developed an analytical product being used by baseball clubs. There's also a product for fans. Improve your fantasy player, track your favorite players and teams. Go to BloombergSports.com for details. But it does not seem that uh, Gio Gonzalez is going to pitch the eight innings. Rick Breslow back up to the bullpen. You have to think since he is getting loose after one out of this inning that he would be starting the eighth inning. Back to top to batting, what a full Reds. Great outing, especially to get through seven innings, just trying to see if his club can score him more than the one run that's on the board. No earned runs, just the one walk. Nine punch outs. Down around the knees, a strike. 0 oh, 2 to Rajay Davis. 0 oh, for 3, but he's been on base twice. Pitching on fielder's choice in the third in and the fifth, and he scored the A's only run in that fifth. Brandon Phillips flips to first, and that's the second out. Well, for most Tuesday's games, the rest of the season, fans driving to the game park for free. Guess what? Well, that's the next night. And also, just show your Chevy car keys on the night of the game. The A's box office. Receive a field-level game ticket for only $20. That's a savings of $6. The next Chevy free parking is tomorrow night, Tuesday. Against the Cincinnati Reds. For details, you can visit OaklandAthletics.com. So, fill up the parking lot because you don't even have to come up with Buy a bunch of hot dogs with that money you save. Well, that's when you come back the next night. Or double play Wednesday. Or the next afternoon. That's true. Curveball, a good one. One and one. A's have five hits in the game. The Reds with four. It with that high ERA, but he's made some quality pitches here in the seventh inning. It's a fastball away to Derek Barton. Close enough, he had to swing. Sir, just found. All right, remember we talked about Mike Leak making it to the big leagues, no games in the minors. There was 20 other players who had did that. He catches Barton's foot, and that'll hurt a little bit. So Jerry Crawford's going to give him some time. The Reds have a list of the 20 other guys, and three of them are Oakland A's. Ariel Prieto, 1995. But the interesting thing is Tim Conroy in '78. Mike Morgan in 78, both in June of 78. <laughs> and both of those youngsters, Morgan and Conroy, were out of high school. Get him in there. Let's go. Very interesting. The last one to do it before Leak was Xavier Naney, who we just saw with the Cubs. Three and two now to Derek Barton. Well, from the hitter standpoint, Joe Morgan, of course, 
of the big red machine. But when you're a hitter in college, you're using an aluminum bat. Yeah. You go right to the big leagues, put a wooden bat in your hand, although I'm sure you're taking bat in practice and played in some games. Got him swinging. So good inning by Nick Massett, and the A's go down in order, and we head to the eighth of a 1 1 game. by authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. Well, when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up, your oil change tune-up and smog experts. It's Craig Breslow who takes over here in the eighth inning for Gio Gonzalez. So unfortunately, Gio will not get a win tonight, but he was outstanding. That first pitch is driven to left. Jackson's going to get there in the left center. Brandon Phillips hit a rocket right toward the gap, but Jackson was able to get there. Boy, he was not going to wait around. First pitch fastball right down the middle. And unfortunately for the A's, right to Connor Jackson. Always takes the pounding. <laughs> well, Yana steps in. He's 0 for 3. On deck is Joey Votto. So not a lot of offense tonight from either side, but plenty of good pitching. Just off the play. So Leak, the starter for the Reds, goes six innings. Gonzalez for the A's goes seven. Good fastball. Breslow's had a good fastball for most of the year. So he has a little more life. Well, it's right over the top. You'd think it'd be very easy to hit, but it's a sneaky, exploding fastball that gets on the hitter right at the last instant very quickly and in point control. Well, you would not think of Breslow as a strikeout guy, but this year, 31 strikeouts in 30 and two thirds innings. The league is hitting 168 off Breslow. Payoff pitch to Yanish. And it's there, strike three at the knees. Well, that is a perfectly thrown fastball. Yanish just could not pull the trigger. Number 19, Joey Pronto. Right over the top, and this low strike was called by Jerry Crawford. Tommy Camp shows it on the plate. That was not the question, it was more of height. Here's Votto. Big swing and a miss by Joey Votto. Votto went to three and one count in the first inning. Hit a double. Since then, first pitch, first pitch out. And this one he swung at like he wanted to make it a first pitch. Out of and now he's behind in the count on two. At over 28, hit 28 consecutive scoreless innings. Ongoing. He's given up one earned run all year. Breslow trying to get Vado with Scott Rowland in the on deck circle. 
you, he would be Ziggler's man, depending on what happens in this uh, at bat. Yeah, this one you could tell is outside plenty. So he set up outside and try to get him to chase. Mark Ellis, a couple steps to his right, and a very good inning by Craig Breslow. Three up, three down with the strikeout. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Going to be Jackson, Suzuki, and Sweeney. Joey Votto with a double off the wall, and it would score Brandon Phillips, unearned run, and that was all that Gio Gonzalez would give up. It's all said and done. Gonzalez went seven innings, four hits, one unearned run, one walk and nine strikeouts, and he was able to tie the game in the fifth inning thanks to Connor Jackson's two-out RBI hit. So as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning, one four and one for the Reds, one five and one for the Athletics. Nick Massett back out there. He had a three up, three down seventh inning. First pitch to Connor Jackson is rolled foul. Looks to me, Ray, like just in the last couple days, teams are starting to try to pound Connor Jackson inside. Exactly. This one's hit high to right field. Heisey has it, and that is out number one. Well, Beach Towers will go to 10,000 fans on Sunday. And this coming Sunday, June 27th, when the A's finish a three-game series against the Pirates. Game Times 105 of the Beach Towers are brought to you by Octavate Summit Medical Center. For tickets, as always, go to openathletics.com or call 877-493-BALL. It's a nice beach stuff. Yeah. Perfect time to get it. In the June. It's a good one since beach. Take it to the pool. Wrap Jack up there. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he was. I'm going to actually wait till the day they give it away. Or you, unless, somebody, it unless somebody can get it to me earlier. I got a go to guy within the A's organization. You know what his name is? Ray Fossey. One and zero to Suzuki, who is 0 for three. Pitch up and away. Yeah, a big day Thursday. The A's Community Fund Golf Tournament. Castle Country Club. And you're playing with the same group, aren't you? Well, well, you know, when you the gang, when you win, you have to just keep coming back to defend your title. <laughs> uh, 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 a great golfer. Uh, got a great group. So you're, so you're the favorites again. That's what you're saying. Well, when you have, a, as I say, a guy named Bobby Jones in your group. That's a good story. Says a lot. That's a good story. A while back, Conrad Jepson, Conrad. To hit the ball <laughs> 300 yards minimum. See, if just by looking at the name, Conrad Jepson, my guess is he would be like a long drive oh, contestant. Oh, oh. Yes, Conrad could do. Conrad Jepson. By the way, Conrad watches every one of our games in high definition. And I told him he doesn't have to worry about being upset this year because every game's in the PhD. Uh -huh. So Conrad's is happy. He said, I can really tell when your World Series ring is just, shining, <laughs> just sparkling in, in HD. Popped up on the infield. That is the shortstop, has it? And Kurt Suzuki is 0 for 4. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Hey, go deep with Sportsnet Central tonight at 10.30 on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. A full recap from this game here. Warriors prepare for the draft. Okay, was that the rumor? 30 A's in 30 days. Gabe Gross, David Andrews, and Scott Reese will host tonight in Sports Night Central. Well, Dusty Baker is going to go to the bullpen 
for the second time. Nick Massett faces five hitters. He retires them all. And former athletic Arthur Rhodes coming in to face Sweeney. Join us tomorrow here on Comcast Sports in California. It'll be game two of this three game series the A's and the Cincinnati Reds. Dallas Braden facing Bronson Arroyo. Coverage begins at 6 30 with A's pregame live. The home of A's baseball is Comcast Sports in California. So there's the new pitcher, Arthur Rhodes. We told you he was having a terrific season. Look at the ERA, 0.29. It's pretty good. So he faces Sweeney, and the first pitch is a little bit low. Rhodes is now 40 years old. He'll be 41 in October. This is his 18th year in the big leagues. Signed by the A's as a closer many years ago. In that role. It's been a great setup game. Setup reliever. And as a result, he's been able to pitch as many years as he has because of that. Dusty has liked what he has seen from Rhodes this year. The A's gave Rhodes a two year contract with a club option for a third year. And he really struggled here. And then it was the Jason Kendall trade. Rhodes and Mark Redmond went to the Pirates in exchange for Jason Kendall. Strike three called with a fastball on the outside corner. So Rhodes strikes out the left-handed hitter he faces. Andrew Bailey's heating up. It's 1-1. One, one. And the A's 1-1. One, one. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Oil change tune-up and smog experts. Andrew Bailey comes in here in the ninth. He'll face Roland, Gomes, and Stubbs, three right-handed hitters. The first pitch, Roland fouls it straight back. So. Andrew Bailey comes in. Of course, the four out save yesterday in St. Louis. Swing and a miss, and it's a quick 0 2. Strikeout number 11 by A's pitchers in this game. That's Saturday, June 26th. That's against the Pirates. Is 70s night brought to you in part by Mrs. Fields. Right here at Denny Fields, one of the original A's ball girls, the A's and Mrs. Fields are making a specially designed cookie. Swing and A's logo cookies will be going to fans in one lucky section of the stadium at 70s night. The tickets now open at athletics.com. Always visit. Joe Rudy, Jersey. Good one to receive. We have a lot of gold jerseys in the house because the A's are wearing the gold uniform and the uh, jerseys throughout the stadium. And people just maybe hauling them out if they have one from a long time. That's a good point. Two and zero to Johnny Gomes. Be careful. Johnny Gomes may just let her rip on 3-0. That would not surprise me at all. Gomes has struck out three times. Twice swinging, once looking. I think he's getting ready to swing 3-0. All that preparation. Did and hits with high to center field. And Rajay Davis has it two outs. Andrew Bailey is a little bit extra giddy up on those. He is not just assuming it's going to be 
a take. And Chris Andrew was telling us yesterday in post game. Seems like just yesterday he was on post game. Saying it's just a natural cutter because of his arm. His elbow is kind of bent, which kind of sets up his natural cutter with added velocity on top of it. Two outs for Drew Stubbs. You see, there's that cutter. See how that ball moves away from the right handed hitter? That's a 92 mile an hour cutter and kind of flexing his wrist a little bit. That one right on the inside corner to Stubbs. Stubbs is 0 for 3. Two ground outs and a strikeout. Gonzalez had nine strikeouts. Breslow had a strikeout in the eighth. And Bailey has one here in the ninth for the 11 strikeouts tonight. But Bailey's behind in the count three and one to Stubbs. He does have seven home runs. And it's outside. He walked him. So the two out walk to Stubbs. We're going to get a pinch hitter. It's going to be Jay Bruce. So big strong Jay Bruce is going to hit for Heisey. So I'm sure Dusty knowing that he had Bruce not in the lineup. On the bench was probably waiting for what he felt would be a good opportunity to hit Bruce, and he's got one here. Although he is facing the All Star closer, Andrew Bailey. So here's Jay Bruce, and the first pitch is a curve in first drive. Bruce with nine home runs and 30 runs batted in. Forget about Stubbs at first. He has 14 steals. And there he goes. Swing and a miss, and he's going to make it. So the count is 0 2, but now Stubbs, the go ahead run, is in scoring position. You know, Andrew Bailey, not much of a chance to, for Kurt Suzuki, although a pretty good pitch to throw, but the jump by Stubbs was so great. Let's go after the hitter. Pop up foul. Same pitch location, same foul ball location. Count remains 0 2. Bruce does strike out a lot, 64 times this year. And as he go back to the curveball that he started and went to get the called first strike, just stand with a challenging fastball or. That That's a base hit to right field. Here comes Sweeney. They're going to wave Stubbs home, and he will make it, and the Reds take the lead. And going to second is Bruce on the throw. So Jay Bruce, pinch hitting here in the ninth, comes through with the big hit off Bailey. Well, they try to go inside, and, and just the cutter slider. Kurt Suzuki inside, and he... Just did not have a lot of movement on the pitch. And Bruce actually had too much to play probably for an 0-2 pitch. And the Stubbs running with his speed. No chance for Ryan Sweeney to throw him out. Well, give Stubbs some credit. He picked up the big stolen base. 
So the Reds grab the lead here in the top of the ninth on the RBI single from Bruce. And for Stubbs, the, the walk and then the stolen base, and that was after the strikeout. Going swinging 3-0. And a five pitch walk. Cairo shoots one foul. Keep the count on two. A couple of hits tonight for Cairo in that DH spot. He's hitting eighth in the lineup. Go. Yes, he did. So Bailey, a couple of strikeouts, but a two out walk, a stolen base, and a pinch hit single by Jay Bruce. And the Reds have the two to one lead. Toyota. Say yes to amazing deals on your favorite Toyotas. See your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota. Yes. By Xfinity, the next generation in home entertainment. Now available in the Bay Area and coming soon to the Central Valley. And by Chevy, with a full lineup of award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Jay Bruce, the hero right now for the Reds. He stays in the game in right field. Lance Nix comes in for defense in left field. Johnny Gomes is out. And the closer for the Reds is in, Francisco Cordero. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change in tuna. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. 17 saves, but four blown saves for Cordero as he faces Kevin Kuzminoff. And the first pitch is hit right field and deep toward the wall. Go! Wow. Cordero throws one pitch and the A's have tied it. Well, he hit the home run to left field yesterday and watched Cordero fast forward up and away and he kind of threw up his arms as he saw the ball sail and sail over the right field wall. So Jack Cust was trying to end it and he swings and misses. Kevin Kuzminoff has one home run to right center. Everything else pulled to left field with the exception of this one over the 330. Look at that. <laughs> I can't believe it. I don't think anybody could except maybe Kuz. Well, fastball kind of up yeah, out right. over the plate. You put good wood on it. Stayed back, and you're right. The power is provided by the pitcher. There's no doubt. But Guzman off for three. Opposite field home run. 0 2 pitch and on three pitches, Cust strikes out. So that's out number one. And he just pounded the fastballs just like he did to Kuzman off and stayed away. Second baseman, number 14, Mark Ellis. So here's Ellis. Francisco Cordero has a blown save. Now you'd like to finish it off, maybe give him a loss. Michael Wirtz throwing in the A's bullpen. Now behind in the count one and two. Cordero, his third year in Cincinnati. He signed a huge four year contract after the 2007 season. He saw him all those many years with the Texas Rangers. He went to Milwaukee in a trade. Free agent deal to come to the Reds.
Cliff Pennington in the on deck circle. And Mark hits a liner right at Scott Rowland, and that is out number two. Ellis has lined out to Rowland twice in this game. So Cliff Pennington will try to get on base somehow. First pitch is low to Pennington. One for two, a single in the third, a walk in the fifth, a ground out in the seventh for Pennington. You know, the A's record has not been very good when trailing, especially into the ninth inning. That has changed tonight with Kevin Kuzminoff tying the game with a solo home run. And now three of them. Rajay Davis in the on deck circle. That 3 0 pitch is in first drive. He walked it. So the A's get the winning run at first. And Cliff Pennington. Of course, a threat to steal with two outs. Might as well let him try. And Andre Davis looking to see if Mike Gallego is going to give a sign. It would be more of a green light if he does run. But again, he does have the speed. If the ball is hitting the gap, he can score from first. But always easier to score a single. Pennington is eight for ten in steals this year. And generally, Ray, closers do not do a good job of holding runners up. Andrew Bale, top of the inning. See that high leg kick by Cordero. And of course, usually the manager, in this case, Chris Byer, is making the, the calls for the throw versus. Try to get him to change his uh, delivery to the plate, alter it a little bit. Here's Chris Spire taking his right hand out, waiting for his catcher to look at him and now to give a sign. Pennington goes, he got a good jump. The throw, not nearly in time. Stolen base by Pennington. Terrific jump. Okay, big time jump. You can do anything and everything you want, slide step. That kind of a jump, he's going to go. But Cordero, Cordero with the leg kick. And Cliff Pennington, that first move. Tremendous. And trying to get a deep from Phillips. And Phillips turned around like the ball went into center field. Ramon throwing from his knees. And Phillips. <laughs> ball on his glove very close to Pennington, just ready to tag him if he stepped off the bat. Davis on 2 0 swings at a, a slider. Something hard. Downward movement. So 2 and 1. Davis is 0 for 4. He has scored a run, reached out of fielder's choice. He's trying to win it here in the bottom of the ninth. Now three and one on deck is Derek Park. The count is two and two. So full count. Outfielders coming in three or four steps. And the pitch is popped up. Hernandez is going to get there. He makes the catch. Side retired. But Kevin Kuzminoff on the first pitch of the bottom of the ninth inning. Homers down the right field line off Cordero. So we're headed to extra innings at the Coliseum. It's a 2 2 game.
extra innings at the Coliseum. First game of the homestand. Reds two, A's two. And when it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up, your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Michael Wirtz makes his 16th appearance. And he will face Hernandez, Phillips, and Yanish. Nine, one, and two for the Reds. First pitch is drilled down the left field line, and it hits the foul pole home run. Hit the outside of the foul pole. First pitch. Wow. So it's three to two quickly. One of those that hit so hard, not much of a chance to hook. And I'm not sure this hits. Yeah. Tan right back towards the middle of the plate. And down the line. That close. <laughs> Probably about four inches. <laughs> it. It's home run number three for Hernandez. And here's Brandon Phillips. Slider first strike. Another slider. And that's a strike. No, it's not. Or was it? Yeah, he did call it. 0 2. Well, the Reds' bullpen is quiet, so I imagine Dusty Baker will probably send Cordero out there. The tenth. Rajay Davis coming in, still coming in, and he's not going to get it. Brandon Phillips just jogging down the first base line. Now Rajay got a, a bad jump, actually broke back a little bit, and from the speed of Phillips, he really just jogged down the first jog, and that's something that Rajay missed it at that point, even though Ryan Sweeney backed him up. Can take advantage and get a double play. Kurt Young will chat. So a home run and a single here in the tenth. The hitters Yanish and Votto after him. Cedric Bowers the left. Not a great effort. No, and I, I, you know, it seemed like he was just happy that it was a base hit, but that's the surprising thing about it. Oh. Your speed, boy, when you run hard, you can cause some things to happen. Yep. But attempt right back to Wurtz, and he was going to take the out at first. So sacrifice for Yanish and Phillips to second. I just wonder if anybody was yelling second because. As hard as the ball was bunted back to Michael Wurst, but there might be a chance to get the runner at second. And that's the time to make the move. So with the left-handed hitter coming up, Votto, Bob Guerin's going to go to Cedric Bowers. We'll be back. Well, the Independence Day Series is coming up July 5, 6, and 7. It'll be against the New York Yankees. It's presented by Amway Global. Souvenir ball to the first 30,000 fans on Monday. That'll be game one of that three-game series. So we will indeed look for that. Go to OpenAthletic.com to get your tickets. The Yankees are coming for the second time. The lefty Cedric Bowers comes in, and it'll be lefty versus lefty as he faces Joey Votto. So Michael Wirtz faces three hitters, gives up a home run, a single, and a sacrifice. So the runner at second is Phillips. Pennington playing right near the bag at second, trying to hold Phillips on. Votto checked his swing and a pitch that was a bit high. Pennington coming in to have a chat with Bowers. Same. 
We didn't have a chance to come back. Don't give up this run. Takes off trying to steal third and Votto swings and fouls it. Well, <laughs> Votto is way of saying very aggressive tonight, but with the runner in front of you at second base, getting that kind of a jump. You can see the run. Yes. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, very high leg kick and well, oh, what a an opportunity, but In the bag, too. <laughs> the Reds have some pretty good team speed. They have 51 steals on the year. That's the third most in the National League. Phillips has 10 of those. Three and one with Scott Rowland in the on deck circle. That one's driven to left center and deep. Rajay Davis is going to look up, and that baby's gone. Joey Votto homers, and it's now a 5 to 2 Reds lead. Now, the fastball, and look at that aggressive. We saw the power of the first no, inning going opposite field off the left field wall. This went over. A left center field wall, so I guess he knew what he's doing when he swung at a pitch with Phillips running and said, Heck with you, I drive you in. You don't have to worry about stealing. And he did. He's had some power. Joey Votto, three RBIs in the game to give him 46 on the year. That probably would have been out in their home park, too. Right? That would have been out, yes. <laughs> His double in the first inning would have been out. Scott Rowland, no hits tonight. And the Reds with a three spot here in the top of the tenth inning. Rowland drives one. Left field, and that's gone. Six to two, Cincinnati. Three home runs in the tenth inning. Now for a team that has its power, you give them a chance when the hitters count. And Scott Rowland moving towards the outside part of the plate, but a great top hand swing. And it's be something about the Cincinnati Reds. Scott Rowland, of course, throughout his career, has always run the bases fast on home runs. He never took any sort of a trot. Scott Rowland tonight, Adam Rosales now with the A's, a former Red. That quickly, a very promising end of the ninth inning when Kevin Kuzminoff tied it, but it's Dusty Baker who's the one that's happy now. This is Lance Nix who came in the game for defense in the ninth inning. So Nix, the left handed hitter, getting his first at bat. One now. So Hernandez, Votto, and Roland, all with home runs. That one's driven. Right center. It is dropped by Rajay Davis. Nix is going to round second. He's headed for third, and he'll make it standing up. 
right at the wall. Rajay Davis had it in his glove and he dropped it. Wow. Got up too high. Maybe the night air knocked it down, but when he swung, he crushed it and looked like that was going to be back to back to back. Sounded great. Right center. And as it came down right at the base of the wall, Rajay Davis just missed it. The infield will come in. It's going to be an error on Rajay Davis, a three base error. First pitch to stop, breaking ball outside. It's the second error for the Athletics in this game. They made one in the very first inning. Curve there from Bowers drops in first strike one and one still just one out here in the inning. Good fastball and swing and a miss one and two. Swinging. Fastball down around the knees, and it's out number two. 13 strikeouts by his pitcher's time. Not a good fastball in the straight, but this one by the right hander. So Jay Bruce will hit. That one missed somewhere, I don't know where. Bruce had the RBI single in the ninth as a pinch hitter that gave the Reds the lead. So it's been Gio Gonzalez with seven innings, then Breslow, Bailey, Wurtz, and Bowers. We'll have Barton Jackson and Suzuki in the bottom of the tenth inning with a lot of work to do. Fastball swing and a miss. So Bowers finishes the inning with back to back strikeouts, but the Reds use the long ball. They homer three times in the tenth to take a six to two lead. Send your favorite ace player to this year's All Star game by voting up to 25 times at OaklandAthletics.com. Visit OaklandAthletics.com and cast your ballot now for your 2010 All Stars. Vote early and vote often. Reds with a 6 to 2 lead thanks to the four spot in the top of the tent. So Derek Barton will lead off. Cordero back out there. He threw 20 pitches in the bottom of the ninth inning. The A's tied it. So he's going to get a blown save, but he has a chance to get a win. Not exactly what a closer wants. No, that's a good call. <laughs> One to Barton, who is one for four. Connor Jackson waits in the on deck circle. Well, the goal for the A's is to have Cordero blow two saves in the same game. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> Knees a strike. So full count to Barton. And he missed outside, and there's the leadoff wall. Of 
Cordero is trying really hard to drive his manager crazy. <laughs> he may have already succeeded. Connor Jackson. So Connor Jackson steps in. Jackson, one for three with a walk and an RBI single in the fifth inning. Remember to join us tomorrow. There's the pen. More action. Jordan Smith and Daniel Ray Herrera, righty and lefty. But tomorrow it'll be Dallas Braden, Bronson Arroyo, lefty and a righty. Seven o'clock, the ball game. Way inside, three and all. Dusty might be like Tony Russo when uh, Franklin had a tough time Saturday. Went to Mott, finished the game, but Let's see what happens here. But. For Darrell, struggling a little bit. Inside corner didn't have to be a strike. So it's a full count. And that's low. He walked it. Back to back walks. Barton and Jackson. And you're right, Ray. I don't think Dusty's going to mess around. And they're going to go to the lefty. Daniel Ray Herrera. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. Ben Central tonight at 1030 on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. The full baseball recap from here at the Coliseum. Warriors getting ready for the draft in 30 days and 30 days. We'll set up game from David Andrews and Scott Reese will host. There's the new pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds, the lefty Daniel Ray Herrera. Herrera last pitched on Friday night in inning the third in Seattle. He comes in, two on, nobody out. Kurt Suzuki the hitter. The A's again making it interesting, this time in the 10th inning. Herrera's first pitch to Suzuki is a strike. Hops out at about 83, 84. Screwball. Yes, indeed. That's the scouting report okay. we're going to give you on Daniel Ray Herrera. Everything's soft. Sit back like it's a knuckleball pitcher. 66. There's something about Herrera and his style of pitching that Dusty would bring him in face a right hand. You can see why. Base hit, left field. Barton will stop. And the bases are loaded. Nobody out. And Ryan Sweeney's coming up. 0 2 pitch, and Suzuki found a hole on the left side. Well, they said wait back, and Kurt Suzuki, but you can sit back. There's your big looping kind of a screwball change up, and Suzuki planted the front foot, still plenty left to hammer it left field. First pitch to Sweeney, outside ball one. A walk, a walk, and a single. That one's outside, and both Herrera and Hernandez thought that was a strike. Well, Tommy Cam outside. Can't fool Tommy Cam. Is a strike, two and one. Well, now an 84. Herrera is listed as. Listed at five foot six, 165 pounds. So if you ever, I bet nobody even had a radar gun when he was pitching. <laughs> and now it's three and one. And on deck is Kevin Kuzminov. Yeah. Relief. 
face this lefty. Right, he's warming up in the bullpen. Bounced Phillips. He'll get the out at first. The run comes in to score. That's Barton to make it a six to three game. And he's will again get the tying run up to the plate. So it's an RBI ground out for Sweet. That's what Kuzminov did against Cordero in the ninth inning with the A's trending by a run. He did it. Can he do it again? Dusty's going to make the change again. So Herrera faces a couple hitters, gets it out, gives up a hit. So Jordan Smith is coming in. Against the Cincinnati Reds, the Atlanta Braves scored seven runs in the bottom of the ninth inning to win it. Did you, see, grand slam. Did you see the ball? How he's dropped over the fence. Yeah. Did you see who hit it? Remember Brooks Conrad? That's right. Played with the A's just for a little while, a couple of years ago. He thought it was caught, <laughs> and then he realized he had just won the game. So the fifth reliever of the night, Jordan Smith, comes in and. He's going to face Kuzminov, second and third, one out. First pitch is a little bit low and away. Jack Cust is in the on deck, sir. Oh, well, he is in this Saturday night, trying to come back against the Cardinals. Had the tying run at second after scoring two, make it four to three. Came up a little short. Keep battling back all well, those extra home runs the Reds hit. Top of the extras. Even one of them. Oh, exactly. 2-0 pitch, a 2-0 slider, and Kuzminov missed it. Fastball, pretty good one, but uh, slider slower than a changeup. As Kuz just saw one, 2-0. Actually, sliders, there's three pitching for sliders. That one's bounced towards short. It's going to get a run home. Yanish throws to first. Kuzminov's out. Coming in to score is Jackson, and it's six to four. Well, we can still hold on to that home run hope. How about it? That's good. That's good. The A's hope to have a Saturday night. Well, he pitched it in the eighth, and and the National League did not stay in the game. And Big Jack was on the bench when. Mott got the strikeout in the ninth inning. The A's trailing four to three. Might as well really make it exciting. Cust Ooh, he had one to hit there. He had one to hit. Well, the outfield, if Watch they pitch, right? backed up, yeah, that's just no. a tailing fastball came back, but. <laughs> If the outfielders backed up that hit themselves up against the wall. They're so deep <laughs> all around playing definitely no doubles. Cust another big swing. Yeah, boy, he's had a couple good rips and fastballs and he's fouled them back. Cust is 0 for 3 with a walk. He has one thing on his mind and even going to the opposite field with a home run which he's capable of doing. Two. Cus just trying to keep the inning going. A's have scored twice. Looking for a high fastball, and it is. <laughs> to the extreme. How did I know that? <laughs> well, the catcher was standing up. Suzuki is the runner at second. Just missed outside. Two and two. A couple of walks to lead off the inning, a single, and a couple of ground outs to score the runs. The A's make the long one. That's high, three and two. That's why I think you waste a pitch, going to try to get a, a hitter to swing at a pitch over his head. He's not going to do nope. it. And all you're doing is 
It's a waste of time. Is what it is. Well, and then just adding to a. Now he's come to a three and two pitch, and we're not getting to it either. Payoff pitch, swing and a miss. He struck him out. He went off speed, and Cuss strikes out, and that's the ball game. Well, the A's battled back, and they did it in the ninth, and again in the tenth, but they come up short. And the Cincinnati Reds take game one of this three game series by a final score of six to four in ten innings. Now the change up first base open you don't think about it when you're up a couple of runs but. Sometimes you see pitchers do that just figuring they're not going to give in to a power hitter he did not and. Got the strikeout. It looks like Cordero is going to get a win. Yep. Long save and a win. Michael Wirtz. Interesting inning we had a chance to blow another save on him. <laughs> Dusty was not going to waste any time and see that more often than not. Yeah, they're not going to take a chance to just keep going. The guy's not throwing strikes. Well, the A's have now lost five of their last six. They were hoping after the tough road trip that coming home 